recently I had to make a tiny, tiny PCB for a breakout board for a non-standard module. And that kind of made me think that, hey, can I get a little bit more number of breakout boards for the price I'm paying, for the effort I'm putting in? Maybe I can give away the extra ones to my friends. Well, the answer to that is penalization. Hence, for today's video, we will be exploring how to do manual penalization of one single PCB design. And I'm also quite excited to share with you the final product of that design because I have them manufactured right here. So maybe we will break some boards at the end of it. Now, the first thing to note about penalization that there are two standard ways of doing it. One is called the V group and the other one is called tabs and mouse bytes. So for this video, we will be focusing just on tabs and mouse bytes. The other day I came across this PCB board called the icebreaker, which is an open, open source tool uh, for FPGA. And you will be able to see the mouse bytes, the tabs and mouse bytes right here. And because this project is also open source, we can go ahead right onto the GitHub where the author has kindly uh, put all the KiCad files and take a look at it. And this is where you will see the entire PCB with the tabs and the mouse bytes. And that brings me to step number one. For tabs and mouse byte type of penalization, we need to first get to the footprint of the mouse bytes. So for this icebreaker example, there is actually a library for the footprint. So I'm going to open up the footprint editor and the mouse bytes resides in this uh, library, footprint library called PKL Mechanical. So let's have a look at it. They are just a bunch of drill holes and they are labeled here in this library by the dimension. So for example, if I come here and edit it, you can see that it is a non-plated through hole mechanical. And for this example, it has a hole size of 0.5 mm. Now for my purpose, I used another library, which is called penalization.pretty. It is also very, very similar. After deciding which mouse byte footprints to use, the next step is to work with the original board that we will be repeating. And there are basically two steps here. First, we need to take note of the grid size for the mouse byte so that we can cater that for the repetition. And the second step is to do some adjustments to the edge cuts layer. Now I got this tip from this video, Penalizing Boards Within KiCad by Microtype Engineering. I highly, highly recommend you to watch this video. He really explains it very well. So this is the board that I have and we will be working with this tiny, tiny little board. But before we do that, let's take a look at my mouse bytes that I have chosen. So for this, I'm going to open the footprints editor and I have already added it to my library, the mouse bytes. And there are basically three of them. And this is exactly the same uh, that I have basically cloned penalization.pretty from GitHub by the user Madworm. And for the purpose of my project, I will be choosing this two millimeter slot, which means to say that my grid size for repetition has to be in the order of at least one millimeter. So now that I've chosen the mouse byte footprint, let me come back to my board. The first thing I will do is also choose one millimeter grid size here. Now we might be using other grid sizes for say routing the traces or placing the component, but at the last, at the final stage before penalization, I will choose to the grid size that is applicable to the mouse byte footprint. So let me hide our layers and I'll just turn on the edge cut layer. We just have to ensure that the edge cut layer is uh, kind of drawn in one millimeter grid size, just so that it's easy for us to repeat this component as an array when we penalize the entire board. Now we will have to transfer these lines we have drawn in the edge cut layers to maybe the comments layer because this is not going to be the final edge cut layer. So I'm going to hit edit here or just E and then I'm going to change it to comments or drawings uh, user layer. 
All right, so there seems to be nothing here, but actually on the drawings user layer, you'll see the same edge cuts. So now when I show all layers, it looks kind of the same. And for the next step, this is where we will take the board that we have prepared by removing the edge cut layers and then creating the repetition. So I'm gonna close this and say save. And one thing I want you to notice is that when you open this layout editor, the PCB layout editor from the projects, and when you come to file, there is no option for appending a board. Probably this is very, very KiCad specific. So let me go ahead and open PCB new app directly. And the first thing I'll ensure is that the grid size is one millimeter. And then when I go to file, I should be able to see the append board menu. So I'm gonna click that and go back to the layout file for the single board and I can basically place it anywhere. And upon zooming in, we should be able to see that it is aligning exactly to the one millimeter grid. And I guess we can go ahead and save it and I shall call it dash penalize. Now, one thing to note is that we have to go ahead and add the footprint for the mouse byte. So let's go to the project and ensure that the mouse byte footprints is part of the library. And then we search for mouse bytes There you see the two millimeter is right there. So I'm going to just rotate it and place it right here. So let me go ahead and hide our layers. And just for the purpose of clarity, I'm just going to enable the drawings layer and the edge cuts layer. Now, when I move my footprint because of the grid that we have set, notice how precisely it is aligning with the drawing layer. So maybe you can choose to have one mouse byte somewhere around in the middle, and maybe I'll place one more of the same footprint and maybe somewhere here. All right, so looks like we can go ahead and now create the edge cuts layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the edge cut layer and uh, choose this uh, line tool, add graphic line, and then start basically drawing over the comments layer as a guideline. So let me start by doing that like so. I'll leave the arcs for later on. So let me just draw the straight edges. So notice that the edge cut layer has a little bit of gap and that's for the arcs. So now let me go ahead and draw the arcs. And for the arcs, we'll just click once in the middle of the circle and then once at the outer diameter and then the arc in counterclockwise. All right, so let's take a look by just looking at the edge cuts layer. Okay, I'm obviously missing a few at the edges. So let me do those. And there you see the edge cuts layer is all ready, but hold on, I think I did a mistake. I actually need a gap over here and over here for the repetition. So let me go ahead and delete these lines. So basically I need to ensure that this line stops right exactly where the next mouse byte will start. Similarly for the bottom as well. So I'm gonna start and just end exactly where the next mouse byte should start. All right, so looks like that the edge cuts layer is ready to be repeated. Let's turn on all the layers now. Now for my purpose, I wanted to use a JLC PCB and each of their maximum PCB dimension is 100 by 100. Now, thankfully in the comments layer, I had already put it down. It is 19 millimeter by 23 millimeter. So I'm gonna right click create array four by four horizontal spacing 19 plus two and here it has to be 23 plus two so you need to take the board length and then plus it and now when i click ok there you see this looks a lot better so let me go ahead and hide all layers and all i'll do is just enable the edge cuts layer let me go and disable the rat's nest and now the only task we need to do is close all the edge cuts layer, especially at the boundaries. So let me show a layer and what I'll do is I'll just delete away the mouse bytes at the edges. And when we just look at the edge cut layer, it still looks the same, but the mouse bytes are not there. So I'm gonna now go ahead and delete this tiny little arcs. And after I delete the mouse bytes at the edges, now it seems a lot more uniform, but we just need to close up all the edge cuts layer now. 
So for this, we will just choose the graphic line. We'll just go right at the border and close them up. And I have closed all the edge cut layers, especially at the edges, except for one tiny little one here. So let's go ahead and do the DRC check one last time. And of course, when we run it, we will do continue without refill. It will rightfully say that the board outline does not form a closed polygon. And when we click it, it will come here. Now it is essential that we pass this test in DRC. So I'm going to come here and close this and then run the DRC check once again. And of course, continue without refill and it should all pass. Let's show all the layers. And there you see, this is how a panelized board looks like. So that's what, how it looked like in software with one tiny little board repeated and created as an array. And then we have a panelized PCB. But now I want to show you the same thing that we did in the KiCad software that is manufactured. So this is how the panelized manufactured PCB looks like. I'm pretty happy with the results. As you can see, the mouse bytes are there right in the middle. And more importantly, they are pretty easy to break. So for example, this is a couple of the boards. So let me just go ahead and break it. And that's it. They can be broken into tiny pieces pretty easily. And of course we can go ahead and solder it with the module as well as the breadboardable pin header. Now, I know that I had a very, very different reason for panelizing the tiny, tiny breakout board. For me, I just wanted more number of PCBs. But in the industry, panelization is also used for the purpose of manufacturing PCBs or even assembly shipping or optimizing the entire assembly process. No matter what the reason is, I feel that learning how to do it manually and the concepts of getting the mouse bytes or arranging it in an array will come in handy. So I'm pretty excited to learn about panelization and I hope you did too. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.